Welcome to week nine, day one for IS50B. We got two very important topics to talk about today. One is called barycentric coordinates, which is how you interpolate between three edges of a triangle. Interpolating between two points is pretty easy. That's called a linear interpolation most of the time, assuming you're doing it linearly. And uh, so this is going to be called barycentric, named after Barry himself, barycentric coordinates. And we'll be talking about Z buffering today. So two super important topics when you're doing like 3D game engines and things like that. So barycentric coordinates uh, is something like, I, I wish I had been taught when I was in college because it puzzled me, right? Like if you've got a triangle coordinate here and you got a triangle up here, a vertex up here, I mean, not a coordinate, like a vertex, you got a triangle vertex down here it's like we we now know how to do the edges, right? Like you did the you did the line rasterization. You can draw a line between two points, no problem. So doing a line outline on a triangle is easy. You just draw this line, this line, and this line, called V. And if you want to have the colors uh, interpolate between, let's say, red and blue, up here it's going to be one hundred percent red. Down here it's going to be one hundred percent blue blue and you just lerp between them right linear interpolation lerp. and uh looks like an r let's fix that uh you just lerp between them right and so halfway here it's going to be like 50 percent red and 50 percent blue right and so just as you go along it will smoothly interpolate between red and blue ditto between blue and purple ditto between purple and red what I wanted to know when I was uh, doing graphics in college was, um, what about this point? <laughs> what color should this point be? Right? Because it's kind of far away from red, but not entirely. So there should be some red in it, right? Like it should be like 50% purple, 50% blue here, but kind of as we move towards red, it should pick up a little bit of red, right? You know what I mean? Uh, current day silver does that make sense to you like we want the colors like if you just do the edges it's easy but now we're talking about doing something called filling filling a triangle okay and we want to color it right and later on we'll be doing like textures and things like that but uh, for now this area you know would be kind of more reddish and this area over here is going to be kind of more purplish and this area over here is kind of more bluish or galaxy colored or whatever here bluish um, but like it should like they should like blend into each other right as as you get towards the center and I never uh, I tried to figure that out once for my personal project I didn't figure it out yeah it, it was something like that bugged me because like you know like how do you do it right and so the color to answer your question is computed using what are called barycentric coordinates and so it's it's kind of an interesting concept but check this out if I draw a triangle like let's say we're trying to figure out the color for this point right here if you draw a triangle like this and you compute the area of like what fraction of the overall triangle each of these things get like let's say this one you know, eyeballing it looks about 50% this one looks like about 40% and, the, and then this little one down here is like maybe 10% guess what the colors 50% blue, 40% purple, 10% red. Done. Okay? And uh, you can actually compute these areas very quickly by using the cross product. So what you do is you cross product, uh, if this is A and this is B, AXB gives you uh, that area right there. And if this is C and this is D, C cross product D uh, gives you uh, this area and then if this is E and that is F, you cross product them and you get the area that way. So um, there might be a division by two in there or whatever, but since all of them are divided by two, it doesn't matter. And so basically you just, you just can use the cross product to very quickly compute the area of these triangles here. And cross products uh, are optimized very heavily on graphics cards, right? They do matrix math and they do um, cross products very, very quickly. And so that allows you to compute the relative size of each of these three triangles. And so 
the amount of blue you get is equal to how big the triangle across from blue is. This one is blue. See blue's down here? The bigger this triangle is, do you guys see why that is? Because, do you see why? If this triangle is bigger, it's going to be more blue. Do you see why? And if this triangle is bigger, you get more purple. Is that, is that, do you see why the opposing side, sides uh, triangle matches red? Red, right? Because like if this point moved this way, then this triangle here would get bigger and bigger and bigger. So the closer you get to red, the bigger this triangle gets. And the further away from red it gets, if it moves down this way, it'll this triangle here will collapse down to zero and there will be zero contribution from red. And so that is your homework sign. Okay, so given a triangle, took off a little too much there, given a triangle, uh, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna go through every point on the screen and you're gonna, uh, <laughs> there's better ways of doing this, right? Like the, uh, um, you know, the, the, the worst way is you go through every point on the screen, <laughs> this point, this point, this point, and you see if you're within the triangle, right? And you know how to do that with a cross product. Like if this is uh, the thing and then that's the point over there, if it tells you it's outside, um, don't draw anything, right? But if it tells you it's inside, then like if it's this point here, then you also have to check to see if it's the right of this line and you have to check to see if it's the right of that line. And if it's to the right of all three of the edges, then it is inside of the triangle. Uh, it, it's that's a super lame and inefficient way of doing it, but you can do it. And I, I don't care. Like the, who cares? You know, the, we're talking about a resolution here, like nothing. Um, you can just go over the whole screen and just see if the point is inside of the triangle. And if it is inside of the triangle, then you uh, do the whole barycentric coordinates thing, that thing, like that. And uh, it's like if we're if we're coloring. Oops, took off too much. Um, like if we're trying to figure out the color of this pixel right here, then you cross product each of the things, figure out the relative sizes. You can see this one is like 80%, you know, of the whole area. And so it's going to be 80% red and a sliver of blue and, I don't know, 15% purple. You just add each contribution, 0.8 times 255, two, uh, just 25500, zero, zero, I guess. And then this one's like 15%. And so uh, plus 15% of purple, which is uh, 2550255. Does that make sense to you? So when you multiply a float times a color, the float just multiplies on top of each of them. So 0 0.8 times 255 is. Uh, 0.8 times 255 is 204. So it's going to be 204, 0, 0, plus 38, 38, 0, 38. And then we got like, I don't know, 5% blue here. Plus 0.05 of 0, 0, 0.00255. And that's going to be some small number. 13. Okay. And then you just add the components together. Okay. And we end up with 204 plus 38 is 242 red. Is zero green and 51 blue. So you see the color for this point here is going to be very close to full red, a little bit down from the red and a little bit of blue added. And most of that blue is actually coming from the purple side of things, not the blue side of things, right? Only about a quarter of that is coming from the contribution of the blue point here. Did you go over finding the areas? Maybe I missed it, but it wasn't very clear. I still need practice with matrices and their operations. Sure. So um, create a um, vector pointing from whatever edge it is you're trying to calculate, like this one. You're going to do this all three times, right? And so you've got a vector pointing from purple to red. We'll call that vector A. 
you got a vector pointing from purple to the point in question, that's B, and then you cross product them. Take the scalar cross product, and that gives you the area. And so let's let's say that gives you I don't know thirty, and then you do the same for um, let's call this vector here C, and this vector here D. C times D is I don't know uh, fifty, and then you have a vector here E, and a vector here F. You do E times F, and you get like I don't know three hundred. So you add together thirty plus 50 plus 300, the total area is 380, and the relative fraction is, for this little triangle up here, the, the A times B triangle is 30 over 380, which is, I don't know, like the 13th or so. This triangle here has a rate, uh, area of 30 over 380, uh, 50 over 380, which is about 1 7th or so, I'm just very broadly approximating this. And then this one is 300 over 380, and that's going to be uh, six, three quarters ish, approximately. Okay, so um, does that make sense? And so the contribution of blue is one thirteenth. With these numbers, it's slightly different from these. The contribution of purple is one seventh. The contribution of red is three quarters. So you'd multiply 0.75 instead of what I had before 0.8. Okay. And so, yeah, scalar cross product. Uh, do you remember how to do scalar cross, cross product? Uh, do you remember how to take a vector from one point to another? Let's start with that. Let's backtrack a little bit. So if we've got a point here, let's not do red anymore. Hurting my eyes. So we've got a point at 20x and y of 10. And we've got a point over here at x is equal to 5, y is equal to 5. If you want to have a vector pointing from uh, point A to point B, you do so by subtracting them. So you compute B minus A. And so this vector is going to be 20 minus 5, 15, 10 minus 5, 5. And so what this is telling you is that if you want to travel from point A to point B, you have to travel 15 to the right in the x direction, you have to travel 5 up in the y direction. Make sense? So it's like 15 east and 5 north. Right? So A is 5 east, 5 north, B is 20 east, 10 north, and so you have to travel 15 to the east and 10 blocks north or whatever. And that's, and you do it, 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 everyone always gets this backwards, they always do A minus B, but it's the other way around. If you want to travel from A to B, it's B minus A, or the numbers come out backwards. Crente, Stiver, that you guys remember how to do that? So you're going to have three points. You're going to have this point and this point, and so you create a vector from here towards here. And you're going to do one from here to here, and then you just cross product them. And the cross product, uh, the scalar cross product, um, is just uh, x1, y2 minus x2, y1. So if you have uh, this vector here, which is 15 east and 5 north, and you cross product it against, um, let's just travel east to make the math easy, to point C. So C minus A, and, and C is at 25, right? So point C, you guys understand? Point C is just east, 15 blocks, right? made a little right triangle here, I guess, or something. So C is 15 east. So C minus A is equal to 15, 0. So in order to get from A to C, you travel east 15 blocks. Okay. So if we want to cross product these two, um, we use this equation here. Let me get my face out of the way. So uh, 15, 5 and 15, 0. Okay, so this is x1, this is y1. This is x2, this is y2. Okay, so x1 times y2 is 0 minus, <laughs> maybe we should do it the other way around because, eh, whatever, who cares, um, minus uh, x2, which is 15, times y1, which is 5, 
16 times 5, which is 75. Okay. And so this is going to tell us uh, the area of the rectangle, not the triangle, the rectangle of this, this rectangle here. And so if you look at it, the uh, rectangle is 15 wide, right? It's 15 wide and it is five tall. And so it has a total area of 75. That's what the cross product tells you. Like I said, there's a division by two in there. If you want to find out what the area of the triangle is, you divide by two, but check it out. All of these get divided by two. So we just, we just don't because we're, we're doing ratios, right? Like what is the relative proportion? If you want, you could divide each of these by two and you'll get the same result. Okay. It would be 15 over 190. It's still a ratio of one to 13. Does that make sense? So the cross product could be used to find the, um, the area of a, of a rectangle essentially or a parallelogram more precisely. You guys remember that? Or if not, you now you know it. So um, cross products could be used to find areas like that. And, uh, but it's an area of a rectangle or a parallelogram or parallelepid. It sounds like a fat molecule, a parallelepid. <laughs> no, that's in 3D. You need, you need a... Who comes up with these names? A plesiohedron. <laughs> it's a Vroni cell of a symmetric Delone set. Okay, sorry, having too much fun with that. All right. So, uh, yeah. And so basically you just have to figure out what the relative sizes of the three um, triangles are, and then you color it proportionately. So the only other thing we need to talk about today is Z buffering. Um, so very central coordinates are used to determine, it, it, it's used for interpolating between three points is, is essentially the, the thing that's going on here. And uh, guess what? That comes up a lot when you're doing 3D gaming, or at least when you're writing 3D engines. You know, the Unreal Engine does this for you, right? But um, you would still be surprised how often, like it, it helps to know like how to, you know, like what if, uh, what if your game has um, temperature? Right, and so maybe you've got a temperature here of 80 degrees and 50 degrees and 10 degrees or something, and you've got a mesh, and each point on the mesh has a temperature, and the player puts their hand on the wall here. Well, you know, it's barycentric coordinates. You know, go th go through the math and figure out. You know, so um, yeah, like I said, like what what I'm. It's probably in the CPP standard. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think it is. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's not. So the um, at a higher level, what I'm trying to teach you in this class is like these kind of like the math isn't too bad, right? Like they're like this is like my daughter could do it, you know, like multiplies and you know maybe the decimals might be hard for her. I don't know. Like the math isn't like bad once you understand it, you know. It, the trouble is getting to the point where you understand it, right? Because, like, I'm sure that, it, that if we looked at very centric coordinates, we would get some sort of, like, yeah, there's, like, deltas and, like, yeah. <laughs> the circumcenter O, like, the Gergon point. Like, they do not, like, make it easy to, like, just... Look, it's you, you compute the area and you take the ratio. That I don't know if it's just me, like if my brain's just very smooth brained or not, but like I just it, it really frustrates me, like, after I work through like some complicated math and I find out like, oh, you're just averaging the numbers together. Okay. <laughs> Why didn't you tell that to me from the start? <laughs> yeah. I don't need to see the jo jo the Jacoby series and like this, uh, what are you actually doing? You're you're averaging the numbers. Okay, all right, cool. Just tell me that. Just lead with that, and then we can go into the theory. Like after I understand it, you can go into the theory. So yeah, so what what I'm trying to do in IS fifty B with the two of you, especially since you're both good programmers, is I'm just trying to give you like a set of mathematical 
tools or, or um, just brain concepts that you could just use like when you're making a video and it's not even video games like if you if you go to work for you know some company like general whatever electric or dynamics or whatever and you're working on an airplane wing you know and somebody asks you to find out what the stress is going to be here given the stress here and here and here you're like oh that's a barycentric coordinate problem and then they're like, how do you do it? And you're like, I don't remember, but give me a second with my professor's old game development class and I will tell you in about five minutes. So, okay. And so when you fill the triangle, you basically just go through every point instead of the triangle, compute the color based on the barycentric coordinates and you end up with something that looks like this. So I got a green, uh, I got a red, and I got a blue thing and they're animating and they're also overlapping each other, by the way. And so you saw that one of the triangles actually stuck through the other one. And that, that wasn't a bug, that wasn't a glitch, it's because part of the triangle did penetrate through the other one. And so it draws whichever one is on top at that point. So the, uh, I don't really like the color of this one, I should probably switch out the colors, whatever. So uh, in order to figure out what's on top, you need to do something called Z-buffering. So Z-buffering is um, an old technique, like it was proposed back in the 70s, but they rejected it because the cost of RAM was so high that uh, they, 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 they ruled it out as being impractically expensive. You'd have to use like a whole kilobyte of RAM just to, <laughs> just to do this technique. And now that uh, RAM has dropped in price, um, it's uh, basically standard. You don't need to do it if... Um, you don't need to do it if you're ray tracing, but basically if you're doing standard um, triangle rasterization, um, Z-buffering is the way to go. So how does it work? So let's say that you have a triangle and you raster it to the screen. And so uh, let's just make it all red just for the sake of argument. And so we fill this whole thing in one color. Yeah, it's actually not a bad triangle there. It's not terrible, it came out all right. Now let's say that every point in this triangle is 10 away from the screen. It's at a depth of 10, negative 10. It's 10, 10 down. I don't know. Well, the camera's looking down the z-axis. It's 10 away from us. Uh, let's say now I'm going to render a green triangle, and that green triangle is 5 units away. So we've got the red triangle 10 units away, we got a green triangle five units away. Which one draws on top? Like, let's say I want the green triangle to kind of to cover, you know, this area here. Who draws? Who gets seen on the screen? Do we see the green, the green triangle over the red, or do we see the red over the green? Enter your votes now. Polls are closing soon. So the green is closer, right? We've got red here, green here. The green is going to block my view of the red wherever the green triangle is. And so it's going to over draw the red triangle. Hey, I'm getting a phone call. Let us resume. So the, uh, the way that it does this is essentially the, um, the graphics card for every pixel on the screen. Let's say you got these pixels here, whatever. It writes down, there, there's something called the frame buffer or the screen free, the free buffer. <laughs> Don't say frame and screen at the same time or you get free. Um, something called the frame buffer and sometimes people call it the screen buffer. There's a lot of buffers in, in 3D, by the way. There's a lot of buffers in 3D. Uh, <laughs> but uh, basically this is gonna hold all the color data. Okay. So that's kind of what gets pushed out to the monitor. So 60 times a second, uh, 100 times a second, depending on your frame rate, uh, the frame buffer gets sent through your display port or HDMI cable to your monitor and the monitor uh, draws it on the screen. So this is the color data. But in addition to the frame buffer, and that's like a 2D array, you know, you got, you got your rows and you got your columns and you know, it's got an RGB value at every point. It's a two, big 2D array. In oh, addition, so you're not I'm not streaming. Okay, so uh, uh, all you missed was me drawing a couple rectangles here. So uh, basically, you can imagine 
for each point on the screen, there's not only a color, but there's also depth information held. And that's held in something called the Z buffer, sometimes called the depth buffer, probably other names as well. Like I said, there's a lot of buffers in 3D programming. And uh, stencil buffers and yeah. So what, what the Z buffer does is it holds how far away every pixel is. So if you draw a red pixel to the frame buffer and that red pixel is 10 units away, the Z buffer is gonna be like that spot is 10 units away from the screen. Whereas in the frame buffer, the frame buffer will hold, you know, like a red pixel there. The corresponding Z buffer says that one's 10 units away. Now, when you're rasterizing this green uh, triangle here, if the green triangle tries drawing a green pixel, let's use a green ink on this one. If the uh, green triangle tries rastering to the same spot, green, well, now you gotta figure out which one takes precedence. Do you draw the green? Do you draw the red? And it does so by looking at the Z value of the two com conflicting colors. And so if red is 10 away and green is five away, green wins. And so the Z buffer will update. It will hold a negative five now holding it's five away. And sometimes it's held as positive numbers. It doesn't really matter. And then the frame buffer will also update. And the frame buffer now says that point is green. And so every time you have two triangles ra rastering to the same points on the screen, you use a Z buffer to choose which one draws on top. And so for this assignment, you guys can work together on this as well. It's kind of a fun assignment. In fact, one of you might want to do the Z buffering and one of you might want to do the barycentric coordinates. Seems like a pretty easy division of task. And then uh, I just threw a little animation on top of this. So you can see the, uh, I don't remember how I animated exactly, but I just had the points kind of spinning, I think. But right there, you can see like the, the corner of it was like the, the blue corner is closer to the screen. And so it drew over the weird purple color uh, triangle. Okay. So one more time, I've got an animation going on. The animation is very simple. Um, I'm just rotating them, but you can see the, the blue the blue corner I think I had set as a closer closer corner. Also the bare center coordinates apply to the depth as well. All right. So if you have if you have a triangle and uh, the triangle if this corner is you know five away and this corner is a hundred away and this corner is twenty away, then you have to use barycentric coordinates to figure out the depth of each point as well. Okay. Like I said, bare center coordinates come up a lot. Um, if you want a better way, by the way, of uh, of figuring out how to raster a triangle. Um, what you do is you, uh, uh, let's say, rather than doing the whole screen, which I said is a terrible algorithm, but has the has the advantage of at least being easy to code. Uh, let's say we have a triangle that looks like this. Okay. And you want to just draw, you, you only want to iterate over the um, points within the triangle. What you do is you cut the triangle in half like this. And starting at the top row, you uh, use your powers of linear algebra, y equals mx plus b kind of stuff. There's one line here, there's one line here. And uh, basically you plug in the, uh, you plug in the row and from that you get the starting column and the ending column and you just raster between those. So for example, if this one, uh, let's do a simple equation. It's kind of ugly, whatever. Um, let's say this one is equal to y equals uh, x, <laughs> right? 45 degree angle, right? Simple. And then this one is uh, y is equal to negative x and the uh, plus 40 or something. Uh, okay, so for uh, the row uh, zero here, let's say this is row zero and this is row uh, 20. Um, so starting at row 20, or you can start at zero, doesn't really matter. If you wanna, now let's do 10. That, that'll, that'll give us some, two interesting points to work from. So we plug in 10 and uh, we get x is equal to 10. We plug in 10 for the y, y is the row, right? And then over here we plug in 10 for y, 
and we get negative x equals 40, negative 30, negative 30 equals negative x, which is x equals 30. Um, so you just do a little bit of algebra, right? You've got to handle vertical lines, that's always a thing. Um, and so the starting point is 10, the ending point is 30, and you do a for loop saying 4, uh, x equals 10, 2x is less than or equal to 30. You just go down that row. And you just do that for each of the rows. And that's how you raster a triangle. And if you have something like this, you cut the triangle in half, and you use this algorithm on the upper half and the lower half. It's pretty pretty easy and straightforward. Um, and what you do when you raster it is you draw a color. You draw a color to the frame buffer, and you draw its z, uh, its distance from the screen to the z buffer. And by the way, if the z buffer tells you it's on the other side of the camera, you don't draw it. Right? So I'm using here negative, meaning it's in front of me. But if, if you had a z distance that was positive, that means the point's on the back side of the camera. You don't draw it. Okay. Any questions about that? It's kind of a fun assignment, I think. And after we do this, um, I'm planning on uh, moving on to like SDL and like doing... Uh, I'm kind of excited having all students who are programmers in this class. So it's going to allow me to do some... Uh, assignments that I haven't been able to do before. So, um, yeah, same thing, set up a GitHub, share your, share your work. Um, I recommend one of you do the z-buffering side, one of you do the bare center coordinate side, or just work together on it, because honestly, um, doing the z-buffering is um, it's not hard. <laughs> let, let, let me see how much code it took me to do. Let me pull that off the screen. Uh, so I have a function to clear the z-buffer, which just erases all the data in there. Uh, probably the animation was maybe the worst of it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I can minimize this. Let's see if I can find the z-buffer code for you. There you go. <laughs> so if the z-buffer uh, value that we've computed for the new point is closer than the one that's already in there, then we move the cursor to that point on the screen, uh, we save the, uh, the new z-value into the z-buffer, and we draw uh, the point. Uh, I don't know why this is a fixed color of like gray or something. But yeah, that's, that's the basic idea. Okay. That's that's z buffering. You just have a two D array, and um, if the new point is closer than the other point, you save the new point's depth and you draw the color on the screen. So this will do overdrawing. It'll it'll draw the same point twice on the screen. Um, I probably should have used a frame buffer instead. Me a culpa. But I I think I did it this way so I didn't have to I didn't have to raster the entire screen. If I had a small triangle, it would, it would just move the cursor to the spots where the triangle is and just draw that and not have to draw the entire screen every time. So it'll be fast, this method is faster because it just does direct drawing. It doesn't, it, this doesn't even have a frame buffer. It just directly draws to the screen. Um, the Z buffer, yeah, the Z buffer is uh, is uh, uh, this. The uh, It's a 2D array that holds how far away each point is on the screen. And if the point you're trying to draw is closer, like I just showed you, if the point you're trying to draw is closer than the one in the z buffer, uh, then that point gets drawn. If it's further away, it doesn't get drawn. And so you'll sometimes see this called as a depth buffer as well, I believe. Uh, z buffer, depth buffer. So um, I think you can turn this on in Unreal Engine, actually. So that, that shows um, closer values are closer to zero, right? And the bigger values are further away. So uh, these objects that are closer are drawn darker because they're, they're closer to zero. Black, right, is zero. So if you draw two things over each other, whichever one is closer to zero draws in front of the other one. 
Uh, first described in 74 on fast algorithms for rendering included objects. Yeah. So, Z fighting or uh, a Z buffer conflict comes about when you have two things that are ex the exact same distance away. And so what you're looking at here is uh, floating point rounding errors, right? So sometimes one of them will round to be closer, sometimes the other one will round to be closer, and you'll get these weird, like, zebra stripe kind of things that shimmer and things like that. Um, if you've ever, you, you've probably seen those in video games before, because they'll, like, put a tapestry on the ground, and the tapestry is at exactly the height of the floor, and then it goes like this. Um, it's a classic bug in, um, in video games. So you have to take the, the tapestry and raise it up, like, 0.01 centimeters or something, you know, just enough that it's outside of the uh, rounding error, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and, yeah, one of the problems is the further away you get from zero, the less precision you get. And so the z-buffer conflicts actually get worse the further you are in a world away from the world origin. So uh, that's a problem that um, Minecraft has as well. So that's our class today, uh, especially in UE4 making meshes and objects. Yeah, you just have to pull it off a little bit and that will resolve the conflict. So I look forward to seeing your work on this um, next week. And like I said, I've got some cool new stuff that I've never done before on IS50B coming up. So um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll save that for next week. All right, thanks for coming out, you guys. I will see you later.